so this was an objective. Uh, essentially, how do you produce a PDF kind of booklet um, of, of pages? So we kind of want to produce a map book. So the scenario this customer uh, had was they want, um, you know, they have a number of images of, say, different, uh, I interpret it as different buildings or different maps. Um, they want to show an image of a map, maybe a few vector maps, um, a title, um, some descriptive info about the maps all on one page of a PDF. And they essentially want to do a, a booklet for each, a booklet of different pages like this. So I kind of used some of our sample data that uh, Mark Ireland compiled from the city of Vancouver's open data portal. So I'm taking libraries from the city of Vancouver. Um, and so I've got a few different data sources here. I've got points with all these attribute data about the libraries. I've also got um, CAD building footprints of the libraries, which I can use to show as a map. I can show the actual outline of the library. And then finally, I've got um, ortho photos for the whole city of Vancouver. And uh, the way these are cataloged is there's a number of different photos. There is actually a, a shape file of footprints. So I'm going to use the, the shape file of footprints to figure out which photos I need to read in. And then I can then I can add those photos to my map. So I can create a map book on these with a page for each library. So um, if we start up at the top, there's a bit going in here. So I, starting out with the library points, um, this is kind of the source of my data. I'm starting with just the libraries. Eight of them. There's eight of them. So um, and again, I'm just going to stick the counter again is very handy because I'm actually going to use the counter, um, a trick for the PDF writer. If you want to write multiple pages on a PDF, the trick is to provide a PDF page number attribute. Uh -huh. And that's how the writer knows what page to put your features on. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just take the count of my library because that's um, that I can easily map up to my PDF page number. So that's what that counter is doing. That's why it's right up at the top and it's just going to get merged through on everything. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is take those CAD building footprints and associate those with my points so that I can combine that attribute data. Um, and I'm going to do that with a transformer called the spatial filter. So there's a number of different ways we can um, calculate intersections and things like that um, associating two features. I want the filter because I actually have footprints for all the buildings in the city of Vancouver, but I only care about the libraries. So in a way, I just want to filter out uh, buildings that intersect with one of my library points. And that's going to give me my library polygons with all the attributes from my from my points. Um, secondly, I'm going to take the output of that. Um, and again, that'll have all the attributes merged together. Um, and then I'm going to calculate intersect those building polygons with the actual raster, raster wow. or ortho foot footprint. And that I'm going to use to figure out uh, using the spatial relator because here I want um, all of my buildings output. So the spatial relator doesn't filter like the filter does, but in this case, I want all my libraries. Um, fortunately, my data is good and they all intersect. Um, so now I want to calculate which orthophoto footprint is my building within. And uh, I'm going to do that. Um, then once I figured that out, um, there's an attribute on the orthophoto footprint shape file that I can use to figure out the name of my file. And I'm going to assemble my path um, there it is. Because I know I have a directory of all these photos, and I'm going to use that attribute to assemble my. Then I know my file name, so I know what ortho photo to read in. And then I just want to clean it up a little bit because the ortho photo isn't going to be nicely centered on my building, my library. Uh, so in order to do that, what I'm going to do is oh, oh, feature reader is to actually read in my ortho yeah. photo. Um, then I'm going to do a, a few little tricks here. I'm going to take the center point of my of my library and just kind of buffer it. Um, do a square buffer. I'm yes. setting my buffer edges to square. So basically, I get a nice little block around my library. And then I'm going to use a clipper to clip my photo to that nice little block around my library. So that'll give me a nice photo centered on my library. And, and I think, yeah. I think then let's, let's take a peek. So yeah. theoretically, we wrote out our libraries. So um, there they are. And then actually, the, the workhorse of this is oh, the yeah. PDF page format. I should probably go into that. So we probably want to show this. So this is inside this custom transformer. They all come in here, and here's the, <clears throat> oh, okay, and you laid out where the various pieces are going to be. So what this transformer <clears throat> allows allows you to do is to put um, position things on your page. You can dynamically move around those, um, those various things, and it'll center the various features that are sent into each port. So every port becomes a rectangle on the page, right. and you can, everything that's sent in that port will be centered on that, that part of the page. So I'm using that to kind of lay out everything together and combine it up all nicely. And then I'm, I'm sending out to the PDF writer using that page number attribute um, to create this map book. So um, this just gives you a rough idea. You could spend longer tweaking everything yeah. and um, really 
cleaning up your images, but roughly this shows you the, the basic workflow of how to create something like a map book like this. Um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> really, really cool. So yeah, <clears throat> again, you're relating things and then, oh, you also suggested this would be fun to output to HTML. Yeah, already. that's another thing to consider. Um, this is a, you know, you have a bunch more different features in that one. You have dynamic web content, dynamic charts. Um, you can also do maps with background map tiles. So um, I'd always recommend taking a look at that if, if HTML could meet your needs. I know PDF is popular because it's easy to send around yeah. and share, um, but something else to keep in mind uh, if you're making reports. <clears throat> 